Hello, you're welcome to my channel. Now, in this video, you want to find the antiderivative of this general function here. If we are given any function to integrate, let's say, in the form ax, okay, is a linear function in the bracket, ax plus b, linear function, just the highest power of x is just 1, right? Um, raised to the power of n. Then, we are asked to differentiate that. So, to integrate this, we will just have this as the antiderivative. So pretty much in this video, I will just show you how this right here, we can actually integrate this function to get this, okay? Then when we have this, we are gonna use this formula to solve this particular example. So this is a general example, or this is just a general illustration, and this is just a particular example. So we get on with this, all right? I'm gonna show you step by step on how you can arrive here. You just apply that right here, and we get our antiderivative here. So here, to take the integration of x plus b raised to the power n, we are going to apply a method called the change of variables. Okay, or you call it the u substitution, then depending on the variable we want to substitute. So we're going to change, change of variable is that we're going to change the variable from x to some other variable, in that we make the integrand to be simplified. Okay, this is actually in a complex form, we can actually make it simplify, let's say we can actually reduce it to a power function, or something nice that we can know the defined or the defined antiderivative for it. From there, we do a backward substitution. Okay, let's just get on with it. So I'm going to do by change of variable and try to reduce this to a simpler form. Okay, to do that, I can if I have something like uh, a particular variable, let's say u to some power n. Okay, I can quickly apply my power rule. So because of that, I'm going to say let my u let u be equal to ax plus b. Looking at this, if u is equal to ax plus b, then we can actually change this place right here to u, okay? But we are not yet done because this right here shows us that x is the variable of integration. So we need to change this dx to du before we can actually do, we can actually complete the u substitution or the change of variable. So to get your du, okay, it's going to come from differential of the u. So we differentiate the u with respect to x, we're going to get the du. From there, we can do some substitution, all right? So to get the du, you just have the derivative of u with respect to x, because u here is a function of x, and we're going to have, well, a and b are constants. Forgot to tell you that. a, b, and even a, they are all constants, all right? So their derivatives, when they are alone, their derivative gets to zero. So we have the derivative of a times x. Well, it's just going to give us a, right? Where x is a linear function. And the derivative of b with respect to x is just 0 because b is a constant. So here we just have x. So du is equal to x. Then that simply means this implies that um, du is going to become a dx. Okay? And because the u is going to become a dx, that simply means that the x is going to become the u divided by a. That's just dividing a on both sides. Okay, so we're going to use all these parameters we know to substitute in here. We're going to have the integral of, now in place of ax plus b, we call that u. So we just say u, n is still there, we didn't assign it to another variable. Okay, this is just dx. And dx is the same thing as saying du over a. So we just plug that in, du over a, where a is a constant. Now here, since a is just here, we can write this as integral of 1 over a, because a is in the denominator, its numerator is just du, but we can actually shift it, like I'm doing here. And here we just have du, like this, right? Very nice. And because this is a constant 1 over a, we can take it to the front of the integration sign, we have nothing to really act on it. It's only the variable of integration we're dealing with. So we have 1 over a, and we have the integral of u to power n du. Very nice. Here, it's very obvious that we just need to apply the power rule, and we are done, all right? So here is just, I'm going to write this. I'm going to have 1 over a, well, times from the power rule, you add 1 to the power n and you divide it by n plus 1. So that becomes u raised to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1, like this, right? u raised to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. And what was our u? 
well, our u was equal to a x plus b. So we just need to have 1 divided by a times, this is the denominator, I can write it as 1 divided by n plus 1, okay, and this is u, where u is a x plus b, just have a x plus b raised to the power of n plus 1. And this has the form of this. We just need to multiply. Since it's a product, we just multiply the two stuff right there. We have 1 over a times n plus 1. Then this is just x plus b and it's raised to the power of n plus 1. Yes, we've arrived at the identity where we say that this is the antiderivative of this right here. It's the same thing as we're given. So we just know this, right? It's just the step that matters. The change of variables so you just know how to do your change of variables okay so let's quickly apply it right here now i'm going to write this as a power function or i'm going to write this to have a power n you know here you just square root what is the power the power is one over two right so we have integral of 4x plus 8 raised to the power of one over two dx like this is the same thing where one over two takes the place of n and four takes the place of a and x takes the place of b, so the antiderivative is just going to become, remember, 4 takes the place of a, and a is here, so we just have 1 over 4 times n plus 1, what was our n plus 1? Our n alone is 1 over 2, so we add 1 to that, we're going to have 3 over 2, so we have here to be 3 over 2, like that, and we are done with that, so here we just put in ax, where a is 4, in fact, the whole of this is just here, so we just have uh, 4x plus 8 and raise it to the power of 1 over 2 plus 1. This is 1 over 2. So 1 over 2 plus 1 is just 3 over 2 again. 3 over 2. Well, we are done. We just having to add a plus c, alright? Ha! Ah, forgot to add a plus c here. To show that for any of the this, this is just a plus c, this is just a plus c. Okay. So we just add a plus c. We can decide to simplify this further. Well, here you just two in the denominator. You can actually cancel the four here like this, and we are left with two up here. So this is going to become two times three. That is one over six. One over six. Two. Here we just have four x plus eight raised to the power of three over two and plus some constant c like that, and we are done. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this channel.